Today we're going to discover exactly why this sun oven is such a great tool for preppers. And we're also going to see it in action and how it can cook a meal just like this for when the grid goes down, right after the channel intro. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Ambulance to the roof! Okay, disclaimer, I am not being paid for showing you what I think is an awesome tool for preppers. I did not receive this for free, and I paid full price for this, and then I tested it out several times, and now I am sharing with you what I think is just another great option for cooking after SHTF. So let's take a quick look at the All-American Sun Oven, and then you'll see exactly how it cooked this extremely delicious dinner. And just to specify, I am showing the All-American Sun Oven Dehydrating and Preparedness Accessory Package, which means that you get a few more items than if you just buy the Sun Oven by itself. And I have to admit, at first I was very skeptical if this thing would actually cook food thoroughly enough to where vegetables would actually be soft enough to eat, and I was also concerned that it would get the food hot enough to even be safe enough to eat. But we'll see in this video that it absolutely kicked butt and did a fine job at cooking. Now I haven't tested it out in winter yet, but it's my understanding that it will do just fine as long as the winter day is clear with the sun shining. And I guess the sun oven was even used on Mount Everest in below zero temperatures. Now there's not much that you can not cook in it. Pretty much if it can be baked, then it can be cooked in here. And it's also built pretty sturdy. As long as you're not just throwing it and kicking it around, it should last you for a long time. Now I really like how the reflectors, which is what directs the sun's heat into the oven, but I really like how they unfold and pop into place so easily. And then they also have this little latch at the bottom of the reflectors that you just turn to lock the reflectors into place. And it's got a glass door that closes tightly when you latch it down and this prevents heat from escaping. And I also really like how the pan holders swing to maintain the balance of the pans. And you'll see why this is such a great feature when we go to use it in just a few moments. And I also forgot to include them in this unboxing portion of the video, but the oven also comes with two black ceramic pans that are stackable and they'll be shown later in the video. But it also comes with a built-in thermometer so you can easily watch and maintain the proper temperature. And it also comes with two bread pans, which in a future video I'll be showing how I made a kick-butt loaf of off-grid bread in it, just like you would after SHTF. And it also comes with this thing that you place into your water that shows that you've heated your water enough to the point that it's safe to drink. And then it also comes with these dehydrating racks that you can use to dehydrate foods and herbs with. And in the video, I'm not actually dehydrating these basil leaves, I'm just showing you how it would work. But before we go any further, a link to an anonymous poll should be appearing in the upper right hand corner of the screen just about now. And please go and take that poll and let's see how the prepper community feels about this subject. Is a sun oven something that you already have or something that you've been wanting to add to your preps? Hit the poll and let all of us know and I will be selecting the option yes and have one since I recently purchased this. But now since we've seen what comes with it out of the box, let's set it up and let's use it to cook a kick butt dinner that me and my family ate later that night. First, you're going to want to pick a sunny spot in your yard, some place that will remain sunny for at least a couple of hours because this works best if you turn the oven just about every half hour to keep it in line with the sun. Now this rear stand helps you to raise or lower the sun oven to maintain optimal sun rays hitting it. And when I tested this oven out, it was getting later in the year where the sun no longer comes directly overhead, so I had to prop the oven up just a little bit to properly capture the sun's rays. Now with this oven, you also get these little tent stakes, and they're great for popping the little locking knobs so that you can adjust the rear stand. And then once you get it adjusted right, then you use the little stake to stake the rear stand into the ground to prevent your oven from getting blown over during a windy day or knocked over if you're clumsy like me. 
Now, one of the features that I really loved about the sun oven is the little sundials that's on it. That little peephole allows the sun to shine through it, and at the bottom of the sundial is a screw that shows you where you want to rotate the sun oven so that the sun's ray is hitting that little screw. When you do that, it allows you to know that you've got the sun oven lined up just perfectly with the sun. Now you'll have to excuse my shoddy camera work here. It was really difficult to capture this with my camera. But what I'm showing you here is how I use the sundial to show me which way to rotate the sun oven so that it's lined up with the sun. But you can see now that I have the sun perfectly shining through the sundial's peephole and now shining perfectly on the screw below it. And now that I've got it set up where it's pointed towards the sun, now I'm going to give it a few minutes to heat up. I guess you can call it preheating. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go inside and prepare the meal. So the first thing that I did was I put a few servings of jasmine rice in the bottom pan with the proper amount of water. And then in the top pan, I placed a layer of vegetables. And I really like how these pans are stackable so you can cook more than one item at a time. And then I placed four large chicken thighs on top of the vegetables. And to save you time, I didn't videotape the different seasonings that I put on the chicken. But I wanted you to see how this works and also the black enamel pans and how they really help with the cooking. And while mostly only the inside of the oven gets hot, but since I've had it preheating outside, I'm going to use gloves to place the stack pans inside of the oven. Now while I'm using gloves to place the pans inside, the outside of the oven just usually gets warm. So if you have a small child that may wander up and touch the outside of the oven, it's only going to be warm to the touch and not actually burn your child. And now, since I've put the pots inside the oven, now I'm going to close the glass door and use the latches to lock the glass door down tight. And these little metal latches will get pretty hot, but they usually don't get hot enough to prevent me from using my bare fingers to manipulate them. And now that we got the pots in there, now we're just going to let it be and let it soak up the sun's rays and let it cook away. But we're going to check on it just about every half hour and rotate it to keep it in the best position to keep catching the sun's rays. Okay, now it's been about a half hour later and the sun has naturally moved. So again, I'm going to use the sundial to show me exactly how much I need to rotate it so that the sun is again shining through the sundial's peephole and back onto that little target screw again. And if you want to check the sun oven out, then I'll be putting a link below in the comment section that will take you straight to it. All right, it's another half hour later, so it's time again to rotate it. And again, I would just simply turn it until the sundial shows me that I have it lined up perfectly again. And this time the sundial showed that I needed to lower the angle of the oven to again keep it at maximum sun catching. Now I did this about every half hour and about three hours after the initial point that I first put it into cook, the food was fully cooked. And I forgot to capture it on film, but the sun oven's thermometer said that it got about 325 degrees inside the oven. So now I'm just going to take the chicken and the rice and the vegetables out of the oven and let's take them inside and let's see how they turned out. And I'll tell you this, it turned out wonderful. The chicken skin turned out just a little bit crispy and it was thoroughly cooked. And that's one of the things I really like about cooking with the sun oven. And that is that it's hard to overcook your dinner. While the oven does get hot enough to cook your food, I don't think it gets hot enough to actually burn your food. And the rice also turned out nice and fluffy. It got hot enough that it actually fully cooked the rice and all of the water got soaked up into the rice also. So now let's plate the food and see how the chicken turned out. And as you can see, the chicken was completely cooked and tender and tasted absolutely delicious. And that was our dinner for that night. And the leftovers became my lunch the next day. So now me and the rest of the prepping community wants to hear from you. Please comment below and let us know, do you practice cooking off grid? And if so, what is the last thing that you cooked without the use of your home's oven? And if you would like to see how you can have another option for cooking off-grid for only $20, a link to a video should be appearing in the upper right-hand corner of the screen just about now. 
to learn more about that. And after SHTF, yeast for bread making won't be available anymore if the store shelves are stripped clean. And the yeast in those little packets also don't have a very long shelf life, so you can't buy them and put them in your food stockpiles either. So to learn how you can make your own yeast from your own stockpiled wheat or flour, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen about now. Anyways folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.